in the lecture. <clears throat> okay, so guys, uh, again, good evening. Um, so as I mentioned, this is going to be a, a very fast recap of the of the load flow. Okay, so what I'm using right now will be the slide deck that I gave you. Uh, again, this is also available at the UVLE. Um, so I trust that uh, at least some of you have, have went through these materials. Okay, so kumbaga parang i-review na lang natin tong materials na to. Okay, so I'll start with the definition of the load flow and then I will set up the, the problem, the load flow problem. And then um, I will uh, go through the, the three different or two different methods of solving uh, the load flow problem. And one is using the Gauss-Seidel method and the other one is the Newton-Raphson method. And then for the Newton-Raphson method, we will have two variations, which is uh, the one is uh, uh, wherein the voltages are specified or are written in polar form, meaning the voltages are uh, specified using or uh, a magnitude and an angle. And the other one is uh, when the voltages are, are, are specified in rectangular form, okay? So kumbaga, instead of uh, magnitude and angle, we will have the real and the imaginary components, okay? So again, for load flow, essentially what, what we're doing is a, a simulation. It's a mathematical simulation of the performance of an electric power system under a given set of conditions. Essentially, we are treating the power system as if it's a big network, okay? It's a big network and, that's, and, and we're just solving the network. And, and when we say we solve for the network, it means that we're just solving for the voltages and the currents in the network, okay? And take note that the load flow problem specifically solves for the voltages in all the buses. And once the voltages are available, uh, you could derive everything else, okay? So for example, if you have uh, two buses uh, separated by a line, uh, if you know, if you already know the voltage of, of those two buses with respect to the reference bus, then we can compute for the current flowing through the line, okay? So it's just Ohm's law. Similarly, we can compute for the power flowing through the line, okay? So again, the load flow problem, we are solving for the network. Uh, we are essentially solving for the voltages at each node, at each bus. And once we have the, no, uh, the, the, the voltages, we can derive all other, all other uh, the rest of the quantities, okay? So, <clears throat> Uh, I'm not going to expand this part anymore, no? why we are doing the load flow, because I think it's quite obvious, okay? So take note that uh, it's a way of, of knowing what's happening in the network, okay, using that mathematical model. And it's also a way to, to, to anticipate what's going to happen in a network, if, if there would be addition of loads or a removal or addition of plants, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's, it, it's a, a tool that we can use to predict what's happening and what will happen if there are changes in the network, okay? Now, um, to conduct the load flow, we're going to need the bus admittance matrix. So that's uh, the previous lesson. So I will no longer go into that, okay? And then um, uh, for the next part is, uh, uh, for the load flow, again, we're solving for the voltages at the buses, okay? And for, the, for, a, for a network, uh, just take note that we have three different types of, uh, of buses, okay? So the, the three types of buses are, uh, I'm, I'm skipping some of the slides, guys. Huh? Uh, we have the swing bus, uh, we have the generator bus, and we have the load bus, okay? But before I go to the specifics, take note that for each bus, okay, for all the buses, uh, we are solving for the voltage magnitude, the angle, okay? And then once we have derived these two quantities, we can derive everything else, including the injected, react, uh, injected real power and uh, reactive power, okay? <clears throat> now, so the first type of bus is the swing bus. Uh, in the swing bus, essentially, this is uh, the reference bus. Take note that when we're analyzing a circuit, we have to specify one of the buses as the reference meaning it is the bus that gets the angle zero, okay? And all other uh, phasors will be referred uh, with respect to that bus, okay? So on the swing bus, 
uh, we specified the magnitude of the voltage and the angle there, and that's usually uh, zero degrees. And what we will derive for that bus is the real and the reactive power, okay? Now the generator bus, it is a, a bus where a generator is connected, okay? And then for that bus, uh, we specify the voltage. Take note that in a power system, okay? In a power system and uh, for a bus in a power system, if there is a generator connected to a bus in a power system, then usually that generator uh, maintains, okay, or or yeah, it, it, it maintains the, the voltage at this bus at a, at a particular value. Kumbaga, yun yung trabaho niya, no? Um, to keep the voltage here at a specified value, okay? So, <clears throat> and, and for the, and, and in order for the generator to do that, it has to inject or absorb a certain amount of reactive power. Hence, we are solving for the reactive power, okay? So again, for a generator bus, uh, the voltage is specified because it is the, again, the voltage, that's the voltage that's being maintained by a generator connected to it. Uh, the power injected by the generator is also specified, okay? So just take the case of, uh, of an electricity market wherein all the generators are dispatched. So the, the market operator tells each generator how much power to inject. So that's why uh, we have to specify uh, the value of P here, okay? And then once uh, we, we were able to solve for this too, actually, uh, we, uh, sorry, sorry, we are solving for the voltage and the angle. So once we uh, know the voltage and the angle, we can now solve for uh, Q, okay? Uh, and then the third type of bus <coughs> is the load bus, okay? So it's a bus wherein only a load is connected, okay? So for that bus, usually there is a, a meter connected there. Usually you have a substation and you have a meter. Okay, and then from that meter, we can uh, measure the, the real and the reactive power. Okay, and then um, what we do not know on that bus is the voltage magnitude and the voltage angle. So we are solving for the voltage magnitude and the voltage angle. Okay, so the next uh, few slides. <coughs> Um, when I, I'm going to, um, to, to formulate, to build, the, 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 uh, describe the equations that we're going to use uh, to solve for the load flow problem, okay? So again, just imagine that we have a network, okay? And then that network is made up of several buses, and those buses are interconnected by, uh, uh, by the transmission, by the transmission lines, okay? And then in each bus, you either have a generator, or a load or a combination of the two. In this case, you have a generator and a load, okay? Now, now um, so we already have the network. We know the impedances uh, of the lines connecting the different buses. So it means that we can build the bus admittance matrix, okay? And then V here, it's the matrix that, that uh, contains all the voltages uh, in, in the network. Okay, I here is the current injection, okay? So it's the current that's being injected into the bus, okay? So the current flowing that way is the uh, injected current at that bus, okay? So again, this is also a vector, okay? So inside of that, you have all the I's, all the current injections in all buses, okay? And then the voltage, uh, that V, it's another matrix. It's uh, the voltage in these buses in this bus or for all buses, and then Y is the bus admittance matrix, okay? Now, if we take a look at a particular bus, okay? So just one specific bus, okay? Um, the, the injected power into the bus, so when we say injected power, it's the power being injected by the generator or by the load or by both into the bus and into the rest of the network, okay? <clears throat> so the power being injected into the bus is P plus JQ, okay? And it's equal to V times I conjugate, where V here, that Vs, that Vs is the voltage at this bus. And that I sub S there, it's the current going that way, okay? So it's equal to V times I conjugate. It's the power going that way, okay? Now, uh, take note that this current, this current here, the current going there, 
we can derive that from the first equation. Okay? In fact, if, if, we are, if, if that is I1, then I1 is just equal to the first row of the bus admittance matrix uh, multiplied by the voltage. Okay? So the first row of the bus admittance uh, matrix multiplied by the voltage. Okay? So hence, you have that expression. Okay? So each current here is just equal to say y11 v1 plus y12 v2 plus y13 v3 plus 1y4 v4 etc etc okay so this entire thing here okay it's just the product of the of a particular row there and the voltage vector okay and since the current is uh, conjugated so we have that operator there conjugate okay so s is equal to p plus jq uh equal to P plus JQ equal to V times the current conjugate, okay? Now, <clears throat> um, so essentially this is the equation that we're going to solve. So for each bus, we're going to write that equation. So take note that now we have a simultaneous equation, okay? So we have, so if we have say 10 buses, then we have 10 equations, uh, we have 10 voltages, so 10, 10 equations, 10 unknown voltages, we can now solve that, okay? But the problem with this formulation is that this is a nonlinear equation, okay? Take note that this voltage is here, unknown. That voltage is also unknown. So when we multiply an unknown variable to another unknown variable, then we have a set of nonlinear equations, okay? Now, uh, moving on, uh, moving on. Uh, we will now solve that equation using the Gauss-Seidel formulation. Okay, so I will no longer, uh, I, well, I'll just go to the Gauss-Seidel formulation uh, very fast, uh, no? uh, meaning you have the set of equations, we just have to rewrite it that way. Uh, so for example, for equation one, we solve for x11, meaning we transfer all of these terms to the other side. So you will have a B1, A1 to X2, which is that term, minus A1, 3, X3, which is the next term here, and so on and so forth, until we have transferred this term to the other side, okay? And then since X1 there has a coefficient A11, we just also transfer that A11 to the other side. Hence, you have a 1 over A11, okay? Now, for the second equation, we will just have to solve for X2, okay? So meaning you transfer this and the rest of this expressions to the other side and then multiply uh, both sides by one over A22. So in general, all of these equations here uh, will be converted to something like that, okay? And we're going to employ an iterative process such that we will now solve for the excess. Again, the excess are the unknown variables, okay? So we will get an initial uh, guess for all values of x, we will just plug in it, uh, plug those x uh, on the right side of the equation. So let's say we start with the first equation. So plug in all of those initial guesses, we will get a new value here. And then that new value will go here. Okay, and then uh, uh, the, the other guesses will go there and so on and so forth. So, so on and so forth until we will get values for the x's. Okay. Um, and then uh, once we get the new values of the excess, we will uh, plug them again or to the right side to get new values, okay, on the left side. And then once we get new values, we will plug them in again, plug in, and then get new values, plug in again, get new values, plug in, and then get new values, okay, until we converge. So when we say that we converge, uh, just observe the values of all the va of all the x's, and then eventually they will settle to 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 a value. Or if the difference of the current value is very small compared to the previous value, and if that difference is small enough, then you can stop with the iterative process. Okay. Now, <clears throat> uh, let us now uh, get the Gauss-Seidel formulation of the load flow problem. Again, um, we are starting with um, we are starting with this equation. Okay, we're starting with that equation. Okay, 
And then we will just have to rewrite that equation. Okay, how do we rewrite that equation? Paano siya magiging ganito? Okay, so again, remember that um, S is equal to V times I conjugate. Okay, S is equal to V times I conjugate. So in that equation, if you solve for I, this is what you will get. Okay, uh, let's go back to the first equation. Uh, this one. S is equal to V times I conjugate. So if you want to get I, you can transfer the V here. So you will have an S over V, but the right side still has a conjugate. So if you want to solve for I, then you have to conjugate S and then divide it by the conjugate of V, of the voltage. In fact, that's what's, uh, what's happening here. Okay? So the current is equal to S conjugate divided by V conjugate, okay? <coughs> Sorry for that, excuse me. Okay, so that's S conjugate over V conjugate. And then recall that I is equal to the summation of the Y's multiplied by the V's, okay? So this term here, yan, yung term na yan is just uh, the first row or one row here multiplied by the voltage, okay? So it's just uh, the Kth row multiplied by the voltage vector. Okay, and we're going to write this equation for all buses. Okay, so after writing that equation, we will um, uh, we will rewrite it again. Uh, we do that by extracting v sub k. So we have uh, v sub k there. Okay, we have v sub k there. So how do we solve for v sub k? We transfer everything to the left side. So you will now have a p minus j q over v k, which is this one. And then we will subtract all the terms here. So minus yk1, v1, that one, minus yk2, v2. Ah, wala pala siya. Nasaan si yk2, v2? Nawala siya, no? But, but it should be there, okay? Uh, and then yk3, v3, etc., etc., and so on and so, and so forth, okay? But what's remaining on the other side is still you have that ykk. Hence, we are transferring the ykk to this, uh, to the right side here. And we're going to write that equation for all, uh, for all buses. And we just have to, and we will now apply the gauss seidel equation, the gauss seidel method to this equation here. Okay? Hence, this is now our mathematical formulation. Okay? Uh, take note, uh, we, have, we have converted that, uh, the, 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 these terms into a summation. And then we have broken down that summation into two. So the first summation here refers to the terms that are already solved. And then the rest are the terms that are not yet solved. Okay, take note that we have several equations. We are going through them one at a time. So let's say that you have uh, gone through the first equation, then it means that you have already a new value for V1, okay? So when you already solve for a value of V1, you use that value to solve for V2. And then after solving for V2, now you have a new values for V1 and V2, you use those two values to solve for V3, and so on and so forth, okay? So the Gauss-Seidel formulation can be described uh, using this uh, procedure here. Uh, first, we will, well, you have to solve for the bus admittance matrix that's already, um, uh, that's implied you know, that you should have the bus admittance matrix with you, okay? And then the number one here is that you are <coughs> going to um, assume, you're, you're going to initialize all voltages. And usually you equate that to one angle zero or equal to the, to the voltage at the slack bus or at the slack, slack generator, okay? So if the slack uh, generator is say 1.05 per unit, then you can initialize to 1.05. Okay, uh, if the slack bus is one per unit, then you can initialize to one per unit. Okay, <clears throat> and then after after um, initializing, so when I say initializing, we are guessing. You know? take note that the best guess is one angle zero because most probably all the uh, all the voltages will be around that number. Okay, take note that we desire the the the, the voltage at each bus to be between say uh, ninety percent to one hundred. 10% of the nominal value, okay? So once we have that, uh, we plug in all those voltages on the first equation for bus one, and then we will be able to solve for a new value for 
the voltage on that bus. And then we keep, we will keep on doing that dun sa lahat ng equations and all equations until uh, we, we have gone through all equations, okay? And then we have new values for the voltages, okay? And then, so we do it for the, for bus two, and then we do it for bus three. So again, the voltage at bus three is calculated using the latest value of V2, okay? So we have solved for the value of V2 in this previous equation. So you have a new value already. So as soon as you get a new value, you use it uh, immediately. Okay. So you keep on doing that until until uh, we reach convergence. Later on, I, I will tell you more about uh, how do we check for conver convergence. Okay. Now take note that in this procedure, we are assuming that all buses are uh, load buses. Okay. Because for a load bus, we already know the value of P. We also know the value of Q. Okay? Take note that the Ys here are elements in the bus admittance matrix. So in fact, all the quantities here are known. The only unknowns are the voltages, the Vs. This V here, that V there, that V there. Everything else is given. All the terms here will come from the bus admittance matrix. And then for the load buses, P and Q, are known, okay? Now, what if we encounter a generator bus? So for a generator bus, <clears throat> well, for a generator bus, we do not know the value of Q. So we have to estimate the value of Q, okay? So how do we estimate? We use this expression, okay? Now you may be wondering, saan ang galing yung expression na yan? Where did that came from? Okay, we will just backtrack. We will just backtrack here, okay? This expression here, we are actually estimating the value of Q. So we just have to uh, solve for this expression, okay? So take note, we have voltages, uh, whether they are uh, the initial values or the updated values, okay? And then you plug in those uh, voltage values in this expression. Take note that Y is already known. And then we will get P plus JQ. However, we do not need the real component. What we only need is the imaginary component. That's why going to this, going back to this expression here, we only need the negative, <coughs> uh, the negative, uh, uh, the negative value of. Uh, sorry, not, not the negative, rather the, the the imaginary value of Q. Okay, uh, guys, take note, know that that there are some nuances. Uh, in the slides or in the book, kasi eventually you will find a negative sign. You, know? you may be wondering, how, sir, how come there's a negative sign there? Okay. Uh, take note, going back in this equation here, you have um, uh, P plus JQ is equal to V times I conjugate. Okay. V times I conjugate. But if you have a P minus JQ, then that should be equal to V conjugate times I. And that is what we have in this expression. Not that one, but this one, okay? V conjugate times I. Hence, we need the negative of that, and that will give us Q, okay? So in short, in short, um, for a PV bus or a generator bus, you do not know the value of Q, so we have to estimate it. We estimate that by... Uh, by, by, by solving this expression here. And then once you have the value of Q, you plug it in here, okay? Now, you may be wondering that that summation is broken down into two expressions. Again, ano, yung sinasabi lang dito is that once you have the new values of the voltages, you use it for the old values, then there's nothing you can do. You just have to use the most recent values, okay? The voltages here are already updated. So you have a K plus one with subscript superscript rather, and then you have a K in the superscript here, meaning the voltages are not yet updated, okay? Now, <clears throat> after getting the, the, the reactive power, you plug it here, okay? <coughs> and then uh, you solve for the entire voltage. But take note that in a PV bus or in a generator bus, the voltage is already specified the voltage magnitude rather, okay? So in fact, in a voltage or in a PV bus, we're just solving for the angle, 
Hence, we have this expression here. Okay? That's our Gauss-Seidel equation. Okay? So, may mga, may mga, uh, this is taken from a different book. Uh, and, and this is taken from a different book. Kaya, uh, there's, there are some differences lang on the terms. Ano? But, but this expression here, it gives you both the magnitude and the angle. We need that for load buses. But, but for generator buses, we only need the angle. Okay? Now, um, take note that in this uh, expression here, once we have solved for Q, we directly plug it in here. Okay? Uh, however, there is an intermediate step that, that, that you have to do. <clears throat> and that is you have to check whether the reactive power that you have estimated here is between the limits. So when we say limits, uh, let's go back to the PV bus. We have a PV bus here. You have a generator, okay? <coughs> Sorry, guys. So you have a generator. And, and uh, one, one, uh, one job of that generator is to keep the voltage magnitude here at a specified value. And for that generator to achieve that goal, then it has to inject or absorb the right amount of reactive power, okay? However, the reactive power that it can deliver or absorb has a limit, okay? So imagine if you have a generator that is producing 100 megawatts, you cannot ex expect it to produce, say, one gigavar, diba? Parang, parang that, that's really often, no? You have a generator producing 100 megawatt, yet it's, it's producing reactive power more than, more than the real power. Perhaps the reactive power is just bounded by plus or minus 50% of the real power. So if the generator is producing 100 megawatts, maybe you could expect 50 M bars from it or, 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 or ask it to absorb 50 M bars. So plus or minus 50 M bars. Okay. So, so, um, so you cannot expect uh, the, your generator to, to absorb or produce a large amount of reactive power. So you have to check the reactive power here that, that you have estimated dun sa limits niya, the minimum value or the maximum value. If the estimated reactive power is within the limits, then you just proceed with this equation. However, if your estimate is beyond the maximum, or below the minimum, then it means that the generator cannot, okay, cannot keep the voltage at a specified value because you need more than what it can produce. Okay? Kumbaga, the reactive power that you need from it is more than what it can produce. So if you're going to, if you if you will be needing more and it, and, and it cannot produce more, then it means that the reactive power output of the generator should be capped at that maximum value. Okay? So if Q is greater than Q max, then you use Q max. You plug in Q max here. And if Q is less than Q min, then you have to plug in Q min there. Okay? And since the generator can no longer uh, keep the voltage at the desired value, then you also have to solve for the voltage magnitude. Okay? Kadina, sinasabi ko na, we're only solving for the angle. And that is because Q is within the limits. But if Q is beyond the limits, then the voltage at that bus is no longer maintained at the desired value. So you have to solve for the magnitude as well. You have to treat that bus as if it's a uh, as if it's a load bus. Okay? So, kumbaga, babalik din lang tayo dito sa equation na to. Okay? Any questions, guys? Any questions? Okay? So, that's the Gauss-Seidel formulation. Ano? Um, you have the basic equation here. You apply that for a load bus. And then, if you have a generator bus, you have to estimate the reactive power. You have to check if it's uh, within the limits. If it's within with the limits, then you uh, proceed to using this equation wherein you have to just solve for the angle. Okay? And then 
Uh, but the problem is if you exceed the limits, then you have to use the maximum value or the minimum value and you treat the generator bus as if it's a load bus. Okay. Now that's the ghost cider formulation. Now, uh, I'm just looking here for a uh, for, uh, Um, for the stopping criterion, I think I'll just um, I'll just do it later. Pagdating natin sa Newton Rapson. Okay. Now, at this point, let us pro proceed to the Newton Rapson formulation. Okay. So again, for the Newton Rapson formulation, um, we are solving a system of equations. However, uh, the Newton Rapson is used for nonlinear equations. Okay. So, <clears throat> we are starting with this equation here, okay? Uh, san uli ng galing equation na yan? Uh, that's V times I conjugate. And that's equal to P plus JQ, okay? Everything starts with this equation. Um, everything starts with that equation, Okay? P plus J is equal to V times I conjugate. Or P minus JQ is equal to V conjugate times I. Okay? So in this case, in this case here for the newton raphson formulation, okay, P plus JQ is equal to V times I conjugate. Okay? However, in our formulation here, instead of, <clears throat> sorry guys, um, take note that we are writing the voltage in triangular form, okay? So this is the voltage, then it's equal to V. This is the, a phasor, huh? It's a magnitude times the cosine of the angle plus J sine angle. Actually, the, the phasor voltage is Vs angle theta S, okay? Vs angle theta S, or in trigonometric form, you have Vs times cosine theta s plus j sine theta s, okay? Now take note also that here we have uh, y, which is uh, the, the bus admittance matrix. We are getting elements from the bus admittance matrix. And the y here is expressed also in rectangular form. So each element is a g, a g plus jb, okay? A g plus jb, okay? So, uh, if we expand that expression, uh, this is what we'll get. By the way, I think there's a typo here. This should be a plus, ano? Because that's Vs. So Vs cosine theta s plus j sine theta s. Uh, the conjugate is applied to all terms inside the summation. Hence, uh, the y will become g minus jb. And then the Vs here, Vsr, is Vr cosine theta r minus, you have a minus there because of the conjugate, J sine theta R, okay? Now, take note that this expression here is equal to P plus JQ or S, okay? Now, once we have multiplied everything, all terms, we can segregate, we can separate the real terms from the imaginary terms. And once we pick out all the real terms, this is what we, we will get, okay? Um, guys, uh, you, we just have to trust this equation, okay? So once we have expanded that, get all the real terms, this is what we will get. Take note that all the real terms, if you sum them up, you will get P. And if you get all the imaginary terms, so you have a J there, a J there, another J, J there. So if you multiply everything up, extract all the imaginary values, get the sum of that, you will get Q. Okay, you will get Q. Now, <clears throat> for the Gauss-Seidel formulation, we have this equation. Parang biglang nakakatakot, ano? But, but again, uh, essentially, uh, what's happening here is that um, uh, that equation there is the Jacobian. Okay, that's the Jacobian. And then this is the power mismatch. This is the mismatch uh, of the voltage and the angle, respectively, okay? The values of the Jacobian, we can solve for this, okay? The power mismatch, we can solve for that, okay? Take note, to solve for the power mismatch, what we will do is, um, 
given all the voltage magnitudes Vs and all the voltage angles theta s, we will plug Vs and theta s in these two equations and then we will get a value of P and Q. And we will just subtract that computed P and Q from the schedule or the P and Q that we know. Take note that for the load buses, P and Q are given. Okay? They are known. So the P and the Q here are known. Okay? And then the, uh, this here are the P and the Q solved using that equation. And the difference between them, that's your power mismatch. The real power mismatch, what you'll see here, and the reactive power mismatch. That's what you'll see there, okay? So, so essentially, um, <clears throat> uh, the, the, go, the, the newton raphson formulation is also iterative in nature, meaning we will start with an initial guess. Perhaps all voltages will be initialized to one angle zero, okay? And then once we have those initial values, we will plug in those voltage magnitudes and angles in this equation, okay? And then we will solve for the mismatch. So we will be able to fill this up, okay? And then we will also solve for the values of the Jacobian. And then after getting the values of the Jacobian, we will now solve for the delta theta and the delta V, okay? And the, the values that we will get here are the values that we will add to our original guesses, okay? To the, yeah, to the first guess. So if you have a delta V2, then that's what we will add to, to, to V2, which is originally set to one. Once we have, uh, we solve for an angle delta theta two, then that's what we will add to theta two, okay? And then, and then uh, once we have the updated the voltage, uh, we are going to solve, we will plug the voltage magnitudes and the angles in this expression again. Solve for the mismatch. We will now have a value, a set of values here. And then we will have also um, the Jacobian. We will compute that again and then solve for the deltas. And then using the deltas, we will update the voltages. Okay. Now it looks daunting, you know, because you have that big expression there. What, what the hell is that thing? Sorry for the expression, but what, what the hell is that? Okay, uh, don't, don't fret because each term, okay, we already have an expression for that term, for each term, okay? Take note that we are just getting the derivative of P with respect to theta and Q with respect to theta, P with respect to V and Q with respect to V, okay? <coughs> so for example, this term here, okay? So P is two, theta is two. So if that is P2, P2 is equal to V2 times the summation of Br, G2R cosine theta two minus theta R, B2R sine theta two minus theta R. R is from one to N, okay? We will, this term here is just the derivative of that entire expression with respect to theta two, okay? Similarly, this thing here is just the derivative of that expression with respect to V2, okay? This thing here is just the derivative of that expression. We're getting the derivative of Q with respect to theta. And lastly, this term here is just the derivative of that term of that expression with respect to V2, okay? Now you may be wondering, oh no, I'll be asked to compute for a derivative. Okay, I already forgot how to apply L'Hopital's rule or how to get the derivative of a sine or a cosine. Okay, you don't have to worry about that because those, uh, these derivatives here are already given to us in the next slide. Okay, so for example, uh, take note guys uh, that you have here, <clears throat> uh, that you have here diagonal elements and of diagonal elements. So when we say diagonal elements, uh, we are differentiating P with respect to theta and we have the same subscript. So this is a diagonal element here, okay? Meaning, meaning you have the same subscript here, okay? Whether it's a partial derivative of P with respect to theta, P with respect to V, or Q with respect to theta, or Q with respect to V. So the diagonal elements refer to elements wherein you have the same subscript. The off-diagonal elements are the elements that have 
different subscripts like like this one okay we are getting the derivative of p2 with respect to theta 3 so that's an off diagonal okay take note guys that this is also a diagonal element although literally it's not on the diagonal of the matrix no? but we call it a diagonal element because uh, we are getting the same subscripts okay this is an off diagonal this is also an off diagonal that is also an off diagonal because the subscripts are different okay so if the subscripts are different meaning we have off diagonal elements we just have to apply these equations so for example uh, the partial derivative of p2 with respect to theta 3 s is equal to 2 and r is equal to 3 we will just use that expression this thing here ito na yon. it's just equal to g23 v2 v3 sine theta 2 minus theta 3 minus b23 v2 v3 cosine theta 2 minus theta 3 that's it okay meaning if you get the derivative of this thing of p2 with respect to theta 3 we don't have to do that anymore we just have to use that expression okay similarly if you want to get a partial of ps with respect to vr like this one okay it's an, another off diagonal element because uh, the sub subscripts are different then you just have to use this expression here okay so if s is 2 r is 3 then this is g23 v2 cosine of theta 2 minus theta 3 plus b23 sine theta 2 minus theta 3 okay and then how about for that expression partial of q with respect to theta different subscripts you have it here it's already done for you okay and then for the fourth of diagonal element, the fourth variation, you have that thing, okay? Now, for the diagonal elements, it's say uh, partial of P2 with respect to theta 2, you just use this expression here. You have that big expression there, but it's just equal to negative QS minus VS squared BS. And if S is equal to 2, then it's just negative Q2 minus V2 squared B2, 2. Okay? And you have three other values here. Okay? So essentially, to evaluate that, um, to evaluate that <clears throat> uh, Jacobian, you just have to look at these eight expressions here. First, you have to check whether you have a diagonal element or if you have an off diagonal. Okay, if you have an off the element, then you just have to check whether you're getting the derivative of P. And if you're getting the derivative of P or Q with respect to theta or V. Okay, and once you have that, once you have that, um, you just have to copy these expressions and then you just have to apply that. Okay, you have to evaluate that. So for each iteration, it means that you have to build the Jacobian. You build the Jacobian and then you build the mismatch and then you invert this pre-multiply the inverse of that here to get the delta theta and the delta V. Okay? Now, dito papasok yung LU factorization natin. So again, in LU factorization, A, this is A, times x is equal to b. So instead of getting the inverse of a, we are getting the LU factors. Okay? And then using the forward substitution, then backward substitution, okay, you will now be able to solve this thing here. And actually, that's the reason why we are, uh, we are solving for linear systems. Bakit natin ginagawa yung LU factorization, the Kraut and the Sholesky and the Doolittle, uh, Doolittle, Doolittle method? Because we have to invert matrices, and this is this is the example that we have on matrix inversion. Okay. Now to formalize, um, let's now go to the general uh, procedure for the newton raphson method. First, uh, we build the bus admittance matrix. Okay, it's implied, <clears throat> and then you initialize the values of the voltage and the angles. 
uh, normally the voltages are set to be equal to the slack bus voltage. Okay, so if your slack bus is one angle zero, then you set everything to one angle zero. If it's 1.05 angle zero, then you set everything to 1.05 angle zero. Okay, and then using all those voltage and angles, take note, guys, that 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 uh, our computations here are all in per unit. Okay, you solve for the P and Q using this equation. Okay, so the V there, we well, yung mga one, one, one. Uh, if 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 we are on the first iteration, then that's zero, that's zero, that's a, this is zero, that's zero. How about the G and the B? Well, the Gs and the Bs they came from the bus admittance matrix, where G is the real part. And then B is the imaginary part. Okay? So we, we, we can solve this. Parang ipapasok lang natin yung lahat ng values ng B and ng, ng magnitudes and angles there. Okay? So solve for P and Q. And then once we solve for the P and Q, we will see that it will not be equal to the P and Q on, that bu on those buses. Okay? Take note in the load buses, we know the P and the Q. So at least we will be able to compute how far off are we from the solution, okay? Kumbaga, the voltage that we have right now is giving us P and Q that are different from what we know. So we have to solve for the mismatch. And that's the role of the delta P and the delta Q there. How far off are we from the real, from, from the P and the Qs that we know? So it means that we have to populate this uh, this vector here, okay? We have to populate that vector, okay? Now, once you populated the left side of the equation, okay, now we have to, <coughs> um, uh, we have to be, to mine the PV buses, okay? So for the PV buses, uh, you have to, uh, once you get the, the uh, once you compute for Q, then you have to check it. Within the if it's within the limits. If it's not within the limits, then you just have to set it to the Qmax or the Qmin. And then after getting the Q, Qmax and the Qmin, then you will um, get the delta Qs, okay? Uh, next, uh, the elements of the Jacobian are calculated. Again, we have, to, we have to build that equation. Again, to build that equation, we just have to look at this we have to use one of the equations here, whether off diagonal or diagonal element, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? So, so evaluate the Jacobian. So at this point, at that point, we already have numerical values here. We also have numerical values there. We solve this by matrix inversion or by LU factorization. And once you have solve for all of these values, then just have to update your initial guesses in your. So if you're, if you're able to find a value here, then, and if the initial guess for V2 is one, then you just have to, have to add that value to one, to your initial guess, okay? So you keep on doing that. You keep on doing that, okay? So using the new values of theta and V, the new values of voltage and phase angles are called calculated, and then, you proceed to the next iteration. So when we say proceed to the next iteration, it means that using the new values of voltage and angle, you have to compute for P and Q again. You have to compute the mismatch again to populate this side of the equation. You have to build the Jacobian again, okay? And then you will get another set of delta theta and delta V. And once you have that, you add it to the voltage and angle that you currently have. And then you keep on doing that. Now, the question is, when are you going to stop? Okay, when are you going to stop iterating? Well, you have to look at the left side of the equation. That's the mismatch. It is telling us how far, okay, given the current set of voltage magnitudes and angle, how far off are we, the computed power and reactive power, from what we know from the given P and Q, okay? So it means that if this, if this mismatch uh, values here are very small, it means that the voltages that we already have are close to the actual values. 
are close to the solution. Okay? So you inspect this, and then you choose the largest among them, and then compare it with a certain tolerance value, say 0 0.0001, okay? three zeros and a one. Okay? As soon as the largest among them is less than 0 0.0001, then you can stop iterating. If you want to be more accurate, then you can add more zeros. It could be four zeros and a one, five zeros and a one, et cetera, et cetera. But if you have more zeros, it means that uh, it will take more iterations. You're going to need more iterations. But, but your answer will be very close to the actual solution. Okay? So that's the the newton rapson method yeah we will elaborate more on that uh, next week when we go to the to the <clears throat> to the to the other load flow methods the simplified or the uh, uh, yeah the, 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 the simplified load flow methods okay now the third method is also using newton rapson okay uh, guys just go to the example i will not go to the example okay uh, the third formulation that we have uh, yeah, please just go through this. It's, it's just the same. Iba lang yung ginagamit, ano? Iba lang yung ginagamit na expression. You have J1 there. You have expressions J2, etc., etc. Okay? Uh, I just want to go to the last formulation, which is the rectangular form of the newton raphson flow. Okay? So when we say rectangular form... <clears throat> The voltages are specified in rectangular form. Kanina, we specify all voltages as a magnitude accompanied by an angle, V angle theta. But now, we are specifying all voltages as, or in rectangular form, an E plus J H. Okay, so Vs is E sub S plus J H sub S. So if we're going to use the rectangular form in this expression here, okay? So it means that yung P plus JQ natin, S is equal to P plus JQ, and that's equal to V times I conjugate, okay? So once we use the rectangular form of VS and VR in that equation, we will have that. So this is VS, ayun, that, that's VS. And then VR, you have the rectangular form. You have a conjugate, so that's a negative. That conjugate is also, that operator is also applied to Y. Hence, you have a negative sign there. And take note, this is your YSR, conjugate. Hence, it's G minus G. Okay? And this thing here is equal to P plus JQ. So again, you just have to expand that, expand that, and then collect all the real terms. And the sum of all the real terms is P. The sum of all the imaginary terms is Q. Okay? <clears throat> now, uh, for the generator buses, we know the value of the voltage. So if this is a generator bus, uh, by the way, guys, this should be a plus, ano? parang, parang nawawala yung vertical line. Anyway, if this is a, a generator bus, then we already know the magnitude of the voltage there. We, we were just looking for the angle, okay? So the, the other equation that we will use for the, for the PV bus is this equation, okay? Wherein the, the, the square of, of the magnitude is equal to E squared plus H squared. Essentially, the magnitude of this phasor is equal to, the square of the magnitude is equal to E squared plus H squared. Which is that equation. Okay? <clears throat> now, so since our P and Q are, are, um, are expressed using the real and the imaginary components of V, then instead of differentiating P and Q by V and theta, we will now differentiate P and Q by E or H. Okay, so the real component or the imaginary component. Okay, so, so delta P, delta Q, delta P, delta Q, and then uh, here we have a PV bus. 
But take note, guys, that in a PV bus, we do not know what, what delta, what Q is. So instead of, um, <clears throat> so we do not have a delta Q there. So instead of using a delta Q, we will just have a delta V squared in place of that delta Q. Okay? Now, uh, these are the quantities. These are the mismatch that we can solve. This thing here, we can also solve for that. Take note, kanin, parang kanina, for each term, meron tayong parang kukopyahin equation na lang. In fact, we will also have it here. Okay? So, we will be able to build the Jacobian, and then we will solve for delta E and delta H. Okay? So, to summarize, to summarize, this is how the equation will look like. Okay? We solve for the mismatch. We build the Jacobian. Okay? And then we solve for delta E and delta H. Again, we initialize the voltage to one angle zero. So if we, need, if we initialize the voltage to one angle zero, it means that we will initialize all E's to one and we will initialize all H to zero. So one plus J zero, yung lahat ng voltage natin. And then once we have a delta E, idadagdag na natin yon dito. And then once we have the delta H, idadagdag naman natin yun dito. Okay? And then we keep on doing that. Okay? Now, how about the eight expressions that will go here? Eight nga ba? I think we have more than eight. Okay? This is what we have. <coughs> For the off-diagonal elements, when we say off-diagonals, uh, meaning the, the, the subscript of, of the, the, the one on top and the subscript of the term at the bottom are different. You have an S and an R. Okay? For a diagonal element, uh, we are referring to uh, expressions or, or, or the P and Q or E and H that has the same, have the same subscript. Okay? So for off diagonal elements, um, the partial of P with respect to E is equal to the negative of the partial of Q with respect to H. So this thing here, oops, off diagonal pala. This thing here, partial of P with respect to E3 is equal to this thing here, but the negative of that. So you just have to solve for that. After solving for that, get the negative of that, yun na rin yung value nito using this expression. And the value is equal to GS, GSR, ES plus BSR, HS. Okay, this thing here will go here and get the negative of that it will go there. How about the partial of P with respect to H? Uh, the partial of P with respect to H, this like this one, it's equal to partial of Q with respect to E. So this thing here is just equal to that and equal to that expression. Okay. And then the partial of V with respect to E and the partial of V squared with respect to H are all equal to zero. So this thing here is zero. This thing here is zero, okay, uh, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Um, for the off-diagonal elements, uh, this row will only get a value for the diagonal elements like that, okay, which is here. So have the same subscript, four and four, four and four. Hence, this thing here, will be equal to 2E, and that thing there, partial of V4 with, uh, with respect to partial of V squared 4 with respect to H4 is just equal to 2H4, okay? So these two values will go there. How about the rest? Ito lang yung gagamitin natin. Medyo mahaba lang, ano, because we still have a summation. Okay? We still have a summation. So it doesn't look nice. Okay? So, um, so I will conclude the lecture here at 7.04 para nag-start tayo mga, mga ano no, mga 6.04. So that's, that's an R. Okay. So uh, that's the uh, load flow method using uh, the three, uh, the, the, uh, the load flow problem using the three methods. Okay. Uh, one is the gauss Seidel, and then for the newton Raphson we have the uh, triangular, uh, no, 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 the polar formulation and the rectangular formulation, okay? 
Now, um, wait lang guys. I'll just uh, stop the recording. Um, oops. Ano nangyari? Uh, wait lang folks. Ha? I'll just stop the record. Okay. Uh, stop.